I think I might have to finally start accepting that the days of me having a player in my squad who's older than me are numbered. David Noble recovered from his back strain, then twisted his ankle, then announced his retirement. I mean, it's in a retirement for the end of the season, but he's still only been fit for three games so far this season. I'm going to be the oldest man here. Hello and welcome to part 15 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have an FA Cup first round tie away against Bromley. That's right, we've made it into the FA Cup first round proper. Plus, what at the time of planning this episode was going to be a top of the table clash between us and Torquay, but is actually now fourth against sixth because we've both stumbled a little bit in recent weeks and Slough have decided to establish themselves as league leaders at the moment. But 16 games in, we're only three points off the top of the league. Things are going well. If we have a look at our current form, it really is just that defeat against Chippenham, which has cost us our place up in the top three. And I'd like to think that's mainly because we were distracted at the prospect of playing in the FA Cup first round proper against Bromley as well, who are a team in the relegation zone in the National League, who although we're away from home, We've got to feel like with our form and their form, we have a good chance of beating them and making it into the second round of the FA Cup. And of course, the potential TV time, the potential big draw, the potential money that comes with that. We've already spent any of the money that might be coming in, though. Um, You can see our overall balance is still doing fine. We are now even further over our wage budget than we were before, and that's because I've signed a striker. Uh, Marcus Dinanga, I think he is the striker we needed. I think we've solved our striker problem. Four-star current ability, four-and-a-half star potentially, comes in as the best striker at the club, and he's come in and got four goals from four games, an average of 7.45. I think we have our man... Hopefully he keeps scoring at a goal a game for the rest of the season. Then I'll be very, very happy. But what we need to do now is get into this FA Cup game, hopefully secure a win because I am incredibly excited at the prospect of an FA Cup second round because there's some big teams available for us to come up against in the FA Cup. But this is our team that we're playing today. And it is, uh, it's kind of a new look team. It's it, We've played quite a few games. I think the last... I think the last game you saw us play was up here somewhere. So we've played probably seven or eight games in the league. It's our second season in this division. We don't want to string this season out over 12 episodes again. And I really wanted to get to the FA Cup draw. I love the fact that we thumped Woking 4-1 in the fourth qualifying round. This is the same Woking team that knocked us out of the playoffs last year. I know they beat us earlier in the season. But to get our revenge with Akpabire and Denanga both playing very, very well was very, very satisfying. Uh, but I wanted to I wanted to get through to a significant game. And I think we've got a significant game here against Bromley. But because it's been so long, we have started to integrate some of the newer players into the team. And it is... Probably quite a new looking team. So we've got Davis in goal, who we signed in the summer. I don't think you've seen him play yet. He's not actually played a huge number of games for us. Seven games played, but I'm pretty comfortable that he's probably our first choice goalkeeper now. So Davis in goal. A back for Wyatt, Bender, McKenna and Bloor. Uh, ben Hurd still hasn't played since missing that penalty on the first game of the season. In midfield, we have Patterson, Horton, Sambu and Sadie. Um, Horton he was he was struggling a little bit in the last episode. Um, he's he's doing all right now. I mean, he's still not a spectacular rating, but and he's obviously not offering the same assists that David Noble offers from that midfield spot. So as and when we can get Noble fit again, he is theoretically still my first choice. But he has announced his retirement. If we have a little look at Mr. Noble, plans to retire on the fourth of June this season. Still only played those first three games of the year. And if we have a look somewhere on here, we can see his injuries. I mean, the buttons aren't working. I'm not just being thick. So he had his back strain. And then before he was fit to play again, he twisted an ankle and um, playing for the under 18s. I was trying to get him fit. I wasn't punishing him, but managed to get him. Imagine being a 37 year old David Noble just coming back from an injury, playing an under 18 game and getting injured in that one as well. Uh, you're probably going to be pretty miffed. He was old enough to be the dad of everybody else on the pitch. Um, but And then up front, we're going back Pabire and Denanga, who in this partnership are looking very, very good. Sam Merson is worried 
And Sam Merson should be worried because at the moment, I don't see where he gets back into this team. Denanga could drop across to be the pressing forward and Merson could come back in as a poacher again. But Akpabire, since he's had his uh, his friend up front, Denanga, who he's formed a very good partnership with. I mean, I know he's only got one goal from 12 in the league. That absolutely doesn't tell the whole story. If we look back at the last four games, um, they played particularly well together against Woking and they also linked up well in the Dulwich game as well. I mean, there's been a pr- couple of poor performances in there as well. So it's by no means nailed on yet that that's my partnership. It could end up being Denanga and Merson. But at the moment, that partnership, it tore Woking apart. And hopefully it does the same again today against Bromley. But let's get into that match. Um, we're still not out of TV. Last year, in our FA Cup run, we got on the telly in the fourth qualifying round. Still no chance to get on the telly this year, which is very sad. Um, but let's do our team talk we're gonna I mean all we can really do just yeah we're not going to put any pressure on them we're away from home against a team from the division above obviously they are a team who are really struggling in the division above they're in terrible form and are probably going to be relegated and play in this division next year and we'd like to think we're going to get promoted this season and play in the division they're currently in so we could well be swapping leagues at the end of the season if everything goes to plan from our end and their season is bad Uh, but you know, for now, they, you've got to cast them as the favourites, but I don't know that we're going to get a better opportunity for a second round FA Cup tie in the near future. Denanga with the chance. I mean, it's it's bobbling around in the area there. There was two or three opportunities. I think Akpabire, Horton and Denanga all had the opportunity to tuck that one away. And I hope we don't live to regret the fact that no one actually seemed to be able to finish that off when it seemed to be setting itself up on a plate for all of them. Um, they're focused after their team talk. Um, Wyatt really testing the keeper there and the game has stopped. Is that a penalty or some kind of... I guess we've fouled them because it all it all stopped, but we didn't get a penalty off the back of it. So I guess there was some kind of shenanigans going on in the penalty area and we were the rascals. Right, they've got a free kick now and Davis makes the save. And The only highlights really so far have been three free kicks, which... I would, ex- I don't know, should I expect a little bit more? We've had 62% possession when we're playing a counter-attacking tactic. That's insane. Should we go at them a little bit more in the second half? They're from the t- they're from the league above. We really shouldn't be going at them and attacking. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, we. Well, I mean, we could win this game. Arguably, looking at those stats, we should win this game. But what I don't want to do, they are still a division above us. I don't want to go and attack them. And let them catch us on the break. Because I imagine that plays into their hands. So it's Bloor with another free kick. Third free kick we've had from this sort of range. And it's straight at the goalkeeper again. Because we're in the conference south. We're not going to score spectacular free kicks. Unless Ben Hurd's in the team. Which he's not. Because all he can do is set pieces. He's just He can't do the defending anymore. Which is, I hear, quite important. That's Omar. Omar. Omar's a back in the Borough legend. There's a back in the Borough legend on the pitch. Omar's going to score against us now and I'm going to be devastated. Right, what can we do to try and get a bit of a breakthrough? It's qu- it's refreshing not having to change the central midfield. We're still going to. We're going to bring Bosman on because Horton's not played very well. Neither Sambu, to be fair. But we don't. We, we actually have a full selection of three tactical changes we can make rather than just trying to protect... Um, protect... What's his face? Noble all the time. Use your words, Kev. Right, what can we do as a as a second change? Akpabire, Denanga, neither of them playing particularly well. I'm going to take off Akpabire because I want I want to show you my new toy. And plus, we've not even had we've not given Denanga an opportunity to play as a pressing forward yet, which is his natural position. It gets Sam Merson onto the pitch, and we can have a look at this as a combination. We've got Moyo to come on for Denanga if need be, if he really does continue to play poorly. But perhaps switching him over to his preferred position could help. Back Pabiro's there. Denanga's in the middle, and that is a huge miss. Oh my word! That is the biggest chance of the game so far. First clear cut chance of the match. What a wild miss from Denanga. Oh, that was worth going well over our wage budget for. Yikes. Right, we're going to take off Patterson now and bring on Sanders. Drop Sanders back to left back. Push Wyatt further forward. I think long term, this is where Wyatt's going to play for me. We've got three good left backs. They're all on the pitch at the moment. One at centre back, one on left wing. Um, there's Denango playing as a pressing forward across to Merson. Merson now hits the frame of the goal. We've had opportunities to win this game. Look at how much we've dominated this match against a team from the division above. 
but we just haven't had that killer instinct and it's been something we've been lacking since the start of the save really we've not had that killer instinct I thought Denanga was going to be the man but he's had the clear cut chance today and he, he blew it really and that's that we get a replay back at our place I don't know when the replay is likely to be but I mean yeah you've got to say unlucky we played well there I'm now wondering if that replay is going to happen before the Torquay match if we uh, if we show you that instead do we get to see when the replay is so I think what I'm actually going to do is play the Torquay game offline and then show you the replay, especially if we end up getting a good draw for the next round because then we know what we're playing for. So I guess we're going to have the draw and then the replay. Here we go then, FA Cup second round draw. It's ridiculous that we're even in the hat. But there are some big teams knocking around. Bolton, Barnsley. Um, who else have we got? Bradford. Uh, who else would I class as a big team? This is giving you an insight into who I consider to be big teams. Um, okay. Posh, Posh are in there. Oh, that would be my dream tie. Um, South End, a non to legend, legendary team from previous years. There's no Sunderland. Sunderland must have got promoted last season. Norwich, I think. We're, oh, Norwich are still in there as well. I skipped past Norwich. I knew Norwich were knocking about. So Norwich, I mean, Norwich away would be massive. So let's uh, we'll skip through this draw fairly quickly looking for our names to emerge or a team that we'd like to play we want an away game against a team that get a lot of fans for the money bradford for example get a lot of fans away to bradford would earn us some significant cash twas not to be right if we get through we're going to be at home which it, this this changes everything up now we want someone rubbish we want a brain tree or a dover and we get Link. Oh, see, that is the worst of both worlds. That's a team who are mid-table in League One, but don't really have any fans, do they? They're, what's what's the attendance is like at Lincoln? Um, Lincoln. Okay, ten thousand at home. Oh, that's because it was Coventry, maybe ten. Did Lincoln seriously get ten thousand fans at home? What madness is this? They get the same ten thousand fans every week. Well. Perhaps they will bring some fans. Got to beat Bromley first, though. I'm now super glad I'm not showing you this game. This is us against Torquay. Now, to my colourblind eyes, we're both wearing yellow. I am not going to have a clue in this game which team is who. Who's attacking? Nobody knows. This would have been the worst commentary game in the history of the world. I think we've got the ball now. I'll see you for the Bromley match. Fingers, are we going to score here? Oh, it would have been lovely to score a secret goal. But no, I'll, um, I don't know what's going on. This is ridiculous. We beat Torquay 3-2. It was a rather marvellous game. We were 3-0 up. I then went to a flat back five, but still had wingers and two strikers. I mean, tip for you all, that doesn't really work. We let Torquay back into the game, but luckily did manage to hold on. Akpubire, two goals. Man of the match. He's a hero. I told you he enjoyed his new strike partner. So all of that means going into the Bromley game, we've not really felt the need for massive changes. Bosma comes into the midfield ahead of Horton. But other than that, it is the same team that you saw play two games ago. It's the same team that played against Torquay in the last game. Let's get into the match. And fingers crossed, if we can dominate Bromley the way we did in the first leg but be as clinical in front of goal as we just were against Torquay, we've got to be feeling good about the possibility of getting into the next round of the FA Cup. In fact, so much so, I'm going to tell them I'm expecting a win because I think we were excellent in the first leg. Bromley have been in terrible form and we're one point off the top of the league in the division below now and they're in the relegation zone of the division above. We're basically the same standard. We're now at home and with it being the FA Cup, what I need to be thinking about is if we get an hour into this and it's still nil-nil, do we maybe stretch ourselves and try and attack a little bit? Uh, but there's Bosma. Little back heel to Patterson, back to Bosma. And it's all the way back to Wyatt. Wyatt forward to Patterson again. We're knocking the ball around beautifully. Patterson across track for Bire. What a cross. What a finish. 12 minutes on the clock. It's 1-0. A sixth goal of the season for Rack Bire. But it does not tell the story because that's six goals in four games, I think, now since Denanga has arrived at the club or six from five. This is a beauty of a cross from Patterson. And what a finish from a tight angle on the volley. First time of asking. Akpabiri has finally arrived as a striker at St Albans. And now Bromley have actually got to come out and attack. They spent the whole first leg, men behind the ball, letting us have the ball and just not offering anything at all going forward. They now can't do that. 
They're from the division above. I will keep labouring that point. And we're on the verge of knocking them out of the FA Cup. Presumably they don't even care. They're, I imagine they're more interested in saving their National League status. So could probably avoid the distraction of the FA Cup. For us, it's all about the money. We're, we've got a very healthy looking bank balance at the moment. Oh. Offside? It's offside! Hooray! We bribed the linesman because we've got money. OK, we didn't need to bribe anybody. He was miles off. That, I mean, he, he feels further off than that. I, I admit I perhaps didn't look as, as the ball was played, but still, he was a good half a yard offside regardless. And he looked about three or four yards off. But I think we are going into half time 1-0 up and they've still not had a shot on target. So we've got to be feeling comfortable. Um, let's give that... Should we be passionate? And we have played well so far. We could get even better. We could grab a couple more. Let's let's punish them now. Every single stat, we've been the better team. We are only 1-0 up, though. So let's try and get the whole division above nonsense out of our head. Perhaps it would help if the manager stopped talking about it. But get that nonsense out of our heads and just play them as if they were Torquay in that last game where we went 3-0 up after 20 minutes. Let's just score some goals. I've been toying with the idea of playing Denanga as a pressing forward on attack alongside Akpabiri as a pressing forward on defend. We did it in the second half against Torquay because we were 3-0 up and it, it wasn't particularly effective, but Denanga's through here. Can he tuck this away? I mean, that's poor. He's snatching at chances all of a sudden. He arrived at the club in such good form and since I turned the camera on him, he really hasn't been in good form. And Sam Merson is, is going to be readying his boots. Sam Merson's going to be coming on in a minute because I'm I'm not impressed, Davis. A little bit extravagant, a little bit unnecessarily spectacular, but he holds on to the ball anyway and boots it up pitch towards Denanga, who can't get under it, and Bromley come at us again. They are starting to come forward a little bit more now. We need to be on our toes here. Denanga does well to win that and plays it back to Bender. Big ball over the top for Akpabire, who is, he's got space to run into, crosses it, and, I mean, it looked like Denanga might have got there, but alas, he did not. I think we've won a corner, though. We have, and it's Sadie to take. Sadie's been very quiet today, but the corner comes over. That's a penalty, surely. That smells like a penalty. No. Every time the play stops, I assume they're fouling us, but apparently... We're fouling them rather a lot. But let's make that change up front that we're going to make. So Denanga can come off for Merson. And Sadie, we mentioned as well, has been very quiet. Stuart Wilkin. Finally, Stuart Wilkin is an accomplished right midfielder. It's taken a while. And there's the training report said the only way to get him to natural there now is to just play him there a lot. He still doesn't suit the position at all, which I just can't get my head around. He's a natural there, but can't play there. But he has been training there for nearly a year and a half at this point and has finally moved up to accomplished on the right-hand side of midfield. Patterson, ball over the top for Akpabiri to chase. Merson is hovering behind him. Akpabiri tries to go it alone and uh, it wasn't... I mean, he seems to be better first time of asking. Give him too much time to think about it. It doesn't tend to go very well. I'm keeping an eye on Bosma, who fitness-wise looks like he's struggling a little bit. We do have Horton on the bench and it is a coin flip at the moment as to which one of those two plays. So I think that's a sensible substitution for us to make. And, I mean, what do I say? I want to do a shout, but I don't know what to shout. <laughs> oh, do I shout tighten up? Even though we've been really tight and they've not had a shot on target, are they going to take that the wrong way? Wilkins in behind, back to Merson. Forget your shouts or any of that nonsense. Sam Merson has reminded me that he exists. That's his first goal since that initial burst at the start of the season where he got five goals in the first five games and I thought we finally had our man and then he stopped scoring forever. But Sam Merson is back and if we can get a partnership out of him and Akpabire with Denanga coming off the bench... And we've got three strikers who can all, all score goals, but maybe not all the time. Then that's a perfect situation to be in. And we're in the second round of the FA Cup, boys and girls, which obviously is going to be our next episode now. Us at home against Lincoln. What a finish from Horton. Horton, the former Lincoln man, interestingly. He came in on a free transfer from Lincoln in the summer. So the fact that we're going to be playing against Lincoln might just be motivation enough to get some good performances out of him because he wants to play in that game. And what a finish. 3-0 now against the team from the division above. 
we're in the second round of the FA Cup. What on earth is this going to do to our finances? There's, I mean, there's obviously not very many people here because we're at home and that's going to be the problem for the Lincoln game as well. Do we play for a draw against Lincoln? Or, no, of course. We try and beat them. We want Manchester United away in the next round. Get ourselves a million quid. Set ourselves up for the next three seasons. It'll be amazing. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. That has been a very efficient and effective episode. We've made progress in the league. We're up to third place in the league. And we've done exceptionally well there in the FA Cup. Everyone's happy. When is this Lincoln game? Let's have a little look. Um, oh, I've got a, a steam achievement for beating expectations as well. I don't know what expectations I've beaten. Um, oh, is that for presumably beating the board expectation? Maybe. What was the board? I'm untouchable. Look at the club, which is awesome. So competition performance for FA Cup. Um, so I guess, I, yeah, because that's gone to exceeding expectations, presumably. I don't really know how that stuff works. So FA Cup second round. We're going to do another one of these where we where we don't leave much of it. I am at the start of this episode saying I don't want to do too many episodes this season. It's our second season at this level. We're just going to go straight into... We'll probably do Lincoln. Should we do Lincoln and Boston? What league are Boston in now? Boston. Oh, there. That should be an easy... We're not going to show you Boston. We'll do Hungerford and Lincoln then. We'll show you a league game and the Lincoln FA Cup second round game in tomorrow's episode. And we we can start to dream, boys and girls. Lincoln... I mean, they should beat us, but just, you know, the form we're in, they might be beatable. And imagine an FA Cup third round tie. Look at all the money we've got. Oh. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.